because we're um, really into the early American 50s era, this is probably the, the ultimate car for us. The thing about Fiona and Paul and all their friends, they've really investigated into all this time that they live in. And they're reliving the 40s and 50s. The band's been together about a year, but we've only, I mean, a lot of that was rehearsal time and getting it together and deciding what we wanted to really do. Um, and so far we've only done about, well, Hemsby will be our eighth gig. That'll be, that'll actually be our eighth gig, which is quite something. Yeah, Hemsby's like the home crowd. It's like a football team playing, playing for the home crowd. So it's important like that. Hemsby's a, a a tiny little town in Norfolk, and and the, the actual the actual event is at um, Pontins Holiday Camp, which is slightly slightly tacky, <laughs> um, and and all these people just take it over for a rock and roll weekend. I don't know if we're ready for it. We we haven't um, learned our stagecraft. We haven't played before audiences for a long while to get our confidence up. I think I'll be terrified. I think we all will be. We started wearing drapes first with the leopard skin lapels and drain pipes and create some shoes that I used to wear. And he just carried on from there. My first drape jacket I got from Edgar Jerome's in Aldershot, we, where all the Ted's used to get their suits from then. Doesn't look 50s at all, that looks modern, that's horrible. But, but then I thought it was really good, didn't I? First jacket. Oh, is there a year on the back? It's oh, 19, 1979. Yeah. Did you give me that for my birthday? Yeah. I don't think my mum and dad realise that I'm any different, actually. <laughs> do they? They don't seem to, do they? I don't know. I don't think... I really don't think... I think anything... Cos I'm an only child anyway, and they don't know a lot of younger people. They probably think it's a fashion or something. They've never really commented on the... on the fact that I like older stuff. I'll add an inch anyway because we'll take it in on the seam allowance of the zip and then if ever it needs... I'm it. having a dress specially made. Mel's actually making me a dress because she really knows the, the style and everything. There you go. Oh, oh thanks, thanks Paul. What do you think? Oh, that's brilliant. That's really good. I mean, I wouldn't get up in any shabby dress anyway, but, but I just want something special because it'll make me feel special and I might do, might do better because I've got a nice dress on. <laughs> Paul and I met in a rock and roll club about six years ago. In true romantic style, he proposed to me over the washing up. We hired a 54 Cadillac for the wedding, got married and had a fantastic party afterwards. I've no interest in work at all. At the end of the day, I'm looking forward to getting out the door as fast as I can, going home and practising my trumpet. Sometimes people are asking me what I'm doing of an evening. Obviously, I'm like rushing straight off, going straight to rehearsal or going to a gig or something. And uh, they'll come in the next morning. I'll say, "Oh, what did you do?" And they they like going home and watching the telly, and and that's about it. And I'm surprised how little people do with their lives nowadays. And they're quite surprised at how much I do with my life. I saw some rhythm section out in Memphis when I went over there a couple of years ago. Oh, good. If it wasn't for Roy, I would have gone mad a long time ago. I came in for the interview and I was in an office talking to the boss and uh, there was a hatch in the corner of the room. And the hatch opened up and there was Roy's smiling face looking through at me. And that was it. That was a Paul, big meeting, wasn't it? Yeah, I saw Paul standing there with a greased hair and a uh, draped suit and I thought, that's it, rock and roll. Man after my own heart, so uh, we've uh, been together ever since. All right. Man and boy. <laughs> Man and boy. Known for 47 years. Yeah. <laughs> So when's your next gig, Fiona? Well, I'm doing Hemsby. Uh, did I tell you about Hemsby? No, you didn't. It's um, it's a really big thing for the band actually because it's um, 
it's a, it's a weekend where all people like me go. <laughs> yeah. All people like me. That makes me yeah, sound really weird, doesn't it? Weekend. Yeah, it's uh, it's like Thursday to, to Monday thing, and um, brilliant. And it's uh, yeah, we're actually playing there on the Saturday night. It's a really big thing because people come from all over, all over Europe, definitely, and uh, sometimes people have come from America and Russia and there. It's not exactly the um, just the music. It's the way life well, is life. now. It was, a lot, it was a lot more uh, relaxing. I mean, we we get um, jobs. We had to get in and out sort of twenty four hours. And in the fifties, it was sort of four, five, six weeks. People didn't expect things. Like instant, instant, instant coffee, instant everything. You know, it's, people don't seem to wait for anything. I mean, you've got twenty four hour delivery service. It's just one big madhouse now. But then it was much more relaxed. The way Roy did it was he, he grew up in the fifties. And the 50s progressed and he got into the 60s and he, he was a married man, he had kids and it just went on. But the way I do it, the 60s will never come. Before I had rock and roll, I had nothing. I played rock around the clock and it completely knocked me for six. And I've, I've never lost that, I've never lost that feeling. It sometimes seems that People who are into the 50s are kind of freaks and they're narrow-minded and, you know, they exclude everything else and they live in a dream world, but I don't think it's like that. I mean, we definitely know where we are and, and I mean, there's some intelligent people. There's a lot of talent there as well, musical, there's dress designers, clothes designers, you know. I just feel drawn to that era. It's just that, that the whole time there's just, there was a feeling of optimism and particularly in design, all kinds of design. That's exactly what we want, isn't yeah. it? That's Certainly exactly is. it. What do you think? It's all right, yeah. yeah. Yeah? Well, I've always wanted to sing, but I mean, when I was sort of, when I was younger and I was into different sort of music, it, I wanted to sing even then. And um, I, when I was really young, my mum wanted me to go to singing lessons and I said, no, 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 I'm going to be a singer. I don't want to go to singing lessons because it makes you all posh, doesn't it? Makes you go, I don't know, law, like that and sing like that. So I didn't want to do that. Um, but I didn't know what sort of stuff I wanted to sing, and then when I sort of got into this stuff, I, I, I wanted to sing, but I, I didn't have the confidence. Right, so you get the quality of like a 58 or something, a really good microphone, but looking like a really cool old rock and roll mic. <laughs> this will give you the clarity, the uh, punch, and the image. Is it, is it? <laughs> it's exactly what I want. <laughs> yep, 210. 210. That's a lot of money. A lot of money, yeah. That's a lot of money. Before I was into it at all, that, where I used to live, they, they actually came past in the car and they were on their way to Greenwich Market and uh, they were lost and they came over and, uh, and asked me directions and uh, I saw them, they were all dressed up really 50s and everything and I was, really wasn't into it at all then. And uh, I, when I saw them I thought, oh, re this, is, this is really good, this is what I'd like to look like and uh, asked them about the clubs and stuff. And, uh, about six months later, I went to the, my first sort of club and they, they were there and I spoke to them then. And it's, it's really weird that we're in a band together now. I think it's taken about three years to, to get a band together. We've um, had stops and starts and people letting us down because we haven't actually had a core of the band. But Gary stuck with us and we gradually got there. I've been in a couple of bands before this, but this, I like this one particularly because they they really want to do it properly. Really want to get everything right, you know, original. Rock and roll is what I listened to on my own first and before I met anyone. Then I started going to clubs and it's like having friends wherever you go in the country or in the world. If, if you go to a rock and roll club in Scotland, I'll know someone there. I will know someone there. And that's really something that brings people together. Anyway. I organised the band. They've probably called me the bossy cow of the band. <laughs> but can you not put your instruments down and not fiddle about and... Just bow, just not, at the same time, just yeah. keep going and bow. Not worry really about good. anything, just do it, because the applause might die out and then we'll all be there waiting We'll have to, to rehearse that. This is our last band rehearsal before Hemsby, so it's very important we get things right. <laughs> Yeah, I know, but we've got to do it at Hemsby, haven't we? Mm. Uh, the look of the band, to me, is, in, is as important as the sound of a band. Because you can walk into a club and see a band, and it's the first thing that actually happens, you see them. And you think, wow, they look like something. They don't just look like a bunch of people who have just come off the street and 
play their instruments. It doesn't really matter how you look anymore. There's no pride in um, looking sharp on stage anymore. You've got to look like the bloke next door. Was, uh, we don't agree with that, really. They look really nice, but they're actually very uncomfortable. But a lot of the shoes that we wear are quite uncomfortable. But, the, but because the look's right, it sounds really stupid, doesn't it? But the look's right, so we wear them. I will wear them at Hemsby, but I mean, I'll only be up there for 20 minutes, 25 minutes, so it won't be a problem. All the people at Hemsby know about the style, don't they? Yeah. And if you don't get it right, they'll know you haven't got it right. And it, it's just got to be right. It has got to be right. I mean, I was a bit nervous about... I mean, I know Mel knows the style, so it's all right. Mm. But I was a bit nervous about having something made, because I thought, oh, no, what, what if it it's isn't not right? Quite but right. it does it looks really nice. I think the fabric makes it. It's all yeah, nice. it's, it's original fabric. original fabric, so that's all right. We could have made exactly the same thing in a modern fabric and it wouldn't look half as good. No. I mean, it just wouldn't work. I was trained as a designer, but I just, I resent the fact that designers tell you what to wear for a year and, and the sort of price of the clothes, whereas, uh, you know, we're permanently out of fashion, so it's all right. I think you just, we just don't want to be like everyone else. It's, that's a sort of deep down thing that, come, that can come out in a number of ways, but that's the way it comes out in the fashion. Hello, Jim. Yeah, fine, thanks. Two days to go. Gary's painting the logo on the van, and I'm getting my Desi Arnaz haircut for Hemsby. Well, I've been coming to the gym for about eight years. The reason I come here is because, well, he's cut my hair before, he knows my hair, and he doesn't take too much off the top. <laughs> if he's going to be asked me. <laughs> uh, a lot of people nowadays don't know how to taper up the back of the neck, but he a step in the back of your hair. I wouldn't want that. So it's, it's got to be, a, if he doesn't mind me saying, it's got to be an older barber. We used to do shorter haircuts. I started when I was 14, 1949. Before that. Right. <laughs> he has little so it was syncrasies of his own. He likes it a little bit longer here than I would leave it, but uh, I'll let him have that bit, you know. Wasn't it every two weeks people used to come in for a trim? Oh, oh yes, yes, yeah. It was quite a regular thing, two and three weeks. No two and three months like they do now. Most people knew what they wanted in those days, you know. They don't now. <laughs> it's called Red Peters and the Solid Senders. Um, we thought we had to think of a stage name for Fiona. She's got red hair, so we thought red is an American term anyway, of the time. And Peter's because her maiden name is Pete. So it was a play on that. And the solid senders, just, we, it's just American jive talk, so we thought we'd use that. Solid senders, you know, to, send, to be sent. I felt really uh, conscious about it at first. And when people, like a couple of people came up and said, oh, you're Red Peters, aren't you? And I'm like, oh, no, how embarrassing. But now I've got used to it. I quite like it. A bit more glamorous than Fiona Coleshaw, isn't it? <laughs> I hope it's not cold at Hills because I've packed all my summer stuff. <laughs> it's pretty rain now. I know it will. I think I should put some jumpers in instead. Yeah, I think you should. Okay. And we've got everything. Is that everything now? I don't know, Paul. What do you want to take? You're drying up cloths there, aren't you? Yeah. I've got my band suit. I've got my Saturday night have suit. You got, have, you got, have you got your... Bow tie and all that, yeah. Yeah. And your cummerbund. Yeah. you got a shirt for Saturday night. Yeah. Oh, you'll have everything. got my casual shirts. Got socks and everything in there, haven't we? I might have forgotten something. <laughs>